OK, so we're going to solve this problem where we're given a cubic and it has roots alpha, beta and gamma, and we need to find the sum of the fifth powers of these roots. So instead of actually solving the cubic and then raising each of these roots to the power of 5, we'll take some shortcuts involving an approach related to Vieta's formulas. But before we get on to Vieta's formulas, we're just going to use the fact that alpha, beta and gamma are all roots of this equation which means that if we substitute in alpha, beta or gamma into this equation, we get zero. So we can just first of all write alpha cubed plus two times alpha plus one equals zero, replacing our x by alpha, and then we can do the same for beta and gamma. So we've got beta cubed plus two beta plus one equals zero, and similarly gamma cubed plus two gamma plus one is equal to zero as well. And now to extract some information about the fifth powers, you can imagine multiplying each of these equations by alpha squared, beta squared, or gamma squared, respectively, and then potentially adding them together to get something to do with the sum of fifth powers. So if we just multiply each equation, first of all we multiply by alpha squared, so we get alpha to the 5 plus 2 alpha cubed plus alpha squared is still equal to 0. Then our second equation multiplying through by beta squared we get beta to the 5 plus 2 beta cubed plus beta squared is equal to 0 and finally for gamma we get gamma to the 5 plus 2 gamma cubed plus gamma squared equals 0 again multiplying through by gamma squared so now if we add together all of the left hand sides of each of these equations we're still going to get just 0 because all of the right hand sides are just 0 each so let's add them together and we'll group together some of our terms so we've got alpha to the 5 plus beta to the 5 plus gamma to the 5, first of all. Then we add together all of our cube terms, so plus 2 times alpha cubed plus beta cubed plus gamma cubed. And finally we've just got plus the sum of all of the squares of our roots, alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared, and this is all just equal to 0. So then we can make our sum of fifth powers the subject here, just subtracting these two terms. So now we've got that alpha to the 5 plus beta to the 5 plus gamma to the 5 is now going to be equal to minus 2 times the sum of cubes alpha cubed plus beta cubed plus gamma cubed and also minus the sum of squares alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared. So now we've got a nice expression for the sum of fifth powers which is going to be a bit more manageable and now we need to work using Vieta's formulas kind of approach to find the sum of squares of our roots and also the sum of cubes of our roots. So first, if we work towards our sum of squares expression, we'll derive some more useful information about alpha, beta, and gamma. So using the fact again that alpha, beta, and gamma are roots of this cubic, we can factorize this, because there's a coefficient of one of x cubed, we can factorize as x minus alpha times x minus beta times x minus gamma, and this is all just equal to zero still. And then if we were to expand all of these brackets, we'll get some nice identities. So these are where Vieta's formulas come from. So first of all, we'll just get x cubed. And then our coefficient of x squared here will have minus alpha times x squared minus beta and minus gamma. So we'll write this as minus the sum alpha plus beta plus gamma times x squared. Then our coefficient of x, we're going to have all of these pairs. So negative alpha times negative beta times x all have negative beta, negative gamma times x, and also alpha and gamma. So this gives us plus the sum of each pair, so alpha, beta, plus beta, gamma, plus alpha, gamma, all times x. And then finally we have a negative alpha, beta, gamma term as our constant term there without any x's, and this is all still equal to zero. So this is now really useful because we can compare this to our original expression and compare coefficients. So you can actually see there isn't a coefficient of x squared, the coefficient of x squared is just zero. So that tells us then that this sum of roots, alpha plus beta plus gamma, has to be equal to zero. So this is going to be really useful for us. So the sum of roots is zero. Then if we look at the sum of all these pairs, this is just our coefficient of x. And you can see our coefficient of x in the original cubic is two. So this is telling us then that alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha times gamma is equal to 2. And then finally we see that our product of the roots, so it's negative, is equal to 1. So we'll say that the product alpha beta gamma is equal to negative 1. So these are all going to be really useful now in helping us work out the value, first of all, of the sum of squares of all of our roots. 
So in order to express the sum of squares of our roots in terms of these quantities we know, we need to just find a nice way of expressing this in terms of some of these quantities using a bit of creativity. So here, if we take our alpha plus beta plus gamma term and square this, let's see what we get when we expand the bracket. So if we expand all the brackets, we get the sum of squares alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared, but then we'll also get two lots of each of the different pairs, so alpha times beta, beta times alpha, and similarly you'll get beta times gamma, gamma times beta. So we can write this as plus two times the sum of all of the pairs, alpha beta plus beta gamma, and finally plus alpha gamma. So then we can re-express all of this to get the sum of squares on its own. We can just substitute in. We know that the sum alpha plus beta plus gamma is zero, so we've now got zero is equal to the sum of squares alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared, and then we've got plus two times the sum of all of the different product pairs there. So we know that alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma is equal to two, and then we just multiply this by two, so this is plus two times two or plus four, then we can conclude that the sum of our squares, alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared, must just be equal to negative 4 then. And now for our sum of cubes expression, we're going to start with this previous step we used in deriving the expression for the sum of squares. And next we'll just multiply both sides of this equation by alpha plus beta plus gamma. So never mind the fact that we're actually in this case multiplying by 0 on both sides. This is all going to be valid for all values of alpha, beta, and gamma. So on the left side we get alpha plus beta plus gamma all cubed, and on the right hand side let's group these together as, first of all, alpha plus beta plus gamma times alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared, and then secondly we'll have plus this term, 2 times the sum of all the pairs, alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma multiplied again by alpha plus beta plus gamma. So you can see now that we've got some expressions which we know and we're familiar with, and we're going to get our sum of cubes expression is going to come out of this product here. So if we just label this one as a, then we can actually expand the brackets here to see that a is going to give us, we'll have alpha times alpha squared, beta times beta squared, gamma times gamma squared will give us our sum of cubes. But then we're also going to get some extra terms which we'll need to deal with. So as well as those terms, we're also going to have beta plus gamma times alpha squared, so we'll write this beta plus gamma in brackets times alpha squared, and then the beta squared also gets multiplied by an alpha and a gamma, so write this as alpha plus gamma times beta squared, and finally the gamma squared also gets multiplied by an alpha plus beta. So it's not immediately obvious what we can do with these remaining terms, so we'll just focus on these because the sum of cubes is actually what we're really interested in, so we leave that alone, but if we label this one now as, let's call it b, so then we can write this, we're actually going to factorise an alpha into this bracket, a beta into this bracket, and a gamma into this bracket, and then we'll see how we can express this in terms of some of our known quantities from earlier. So we can, taking this strange factorization now, we've got alpha beta plus alpha gamma all times alpha, then the next one, if we factorise a beta inside, we've got alpha beta plus beta gamma all multiplied by beta. And finally, factorising gamma inside here, we get plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma all just multiplied by gamma. And the reason we've done this now is so that we can... We've got all of the pairs here, but we just need to add one more pair in. So we could have alpha beta, alpha gamma, but we're missing beta gamma. So we could actually introduce a beta gamma times alpha, and then just subtract another beta gamma times alpha. So what we're effectively doing here is adding, just putting them in order, alpha beta gamma, and taking away alpha beta gamma. And we can do the same for each of these three products. So we can do the same here, we've got alpha beta, we've got beta and gamma, we're missing alpha and gamma, which is going to be multiplied by beta. So if we have alpha gamma times beta, we can add in an alpha beta gamma, take away another alpha beta gamma, and finally do the same thing here, plus alpha beta gamma minus alpha beta gamma. This gives us our pair that we're missing, the alpha beta, which will be multiplied by gamma. So why are we doing this? Well, this allows us now to write this whole expression as, if we take, first of all, our alpha beta gamma, the positive one, inside the bracket, we'll have alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma all multiplied by alpha for our first expression, then later we need to take away this alpha beta gamma. But you can see we're going to be taking away three lots of 
alpha, beta, gamma in the end, which is going to be quite nice. And here for our second bracket, we've got alpha, beta, we've got beta, gamma, but then we've also got plus alpha, gamma, and this is going to be times beta now. So it's actually this exact same bracket, which first we multiplied this by alpha, and now we're also multiplying this by beta. And in this third bracket, by adding in the alpha, beta term times gamma, we can effectively just write this as gamma times the sum of each of these three products. And all we need to do for com to compensate for this step is to subtract now three lots of alpha, beta, gamma. So you could now expand these brackets to verify if you like and take away three alpha, beta, gamma, you would indeed get the same expression as what we had earlier there. So this gives us quite a nice expression to work with. So if we substitute back into our original expression, we've got alpha plus beta plus gamma, all cubed, is now equal to, so this was our a, so we split this up into the sum of cubes, first of all, alpha cubed plus beta cubed plus gamma cubed. Then we had plus this term that we called b, which we've just shown is, this is alpha beta, the sum of all of our pairs, plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma, all multiplied by the sum, alpha plus beta plus gamma. And then we also need to take away three alpha beta gamma. But then we also had this plus two times the sum of all the pairs times alpha beta gamma. But this term is actually exactly what we have here. So we can add another two copies of this. So we can say plus three copies now of the sum of all the pairs multiplied by the sum of all of the roots. And then we take away three alpha beta gamma. So we've got a nice equation here. And then we can use this to find the sum of the cubes of the roots, which we can then eventually use to find the sum of all of our fifth powers of the roots of this cubic. So now let's substitute in our known values for some of these quantities. So we know already that the sum of each of our roots is just zero. So we can replace our alpha plus beta plus gamma here by zero. And similarly here, this term is actually just equal to zero as well. So then this gives us on the left hand side, we've actually just got zero is equal to the sum of cubes, alpha cubed plus beta cubed plus gamma cubed. Then this term here is all just zero and then we take away three times the product of the roots, and we know that the product of the roots is negative one, so we take away three times negative one. So then we can just rearrange here to conclude that the sum of the cubes of our roots is then just going to be equal to negative three. And now we're ready to actually just read off the solution to the original problem, because we know that the sum of the fifth powers of our roots, which is what we were trying to work out in the beginning, we know that in this particular problem, this is equal to negative two times the sum of cubes of roots, so negative two times negative three, then we just take away the sum of squares of our roots. We know that the sum of squares of our roots from earlier is negative four. So we end up with six plus four, and we can see then that the sum of fifth powers of our roots is actually just 10 for this cubic.